Welcome on in to VG Emporium. I hope everyone had a really fine Thanksgiving last week. I know I did. So now, uh, uh, if you've been listening to the show for a bit, uh, you may have noticed that a lot of the music I play is of uh, the obscure and most of the times unknown variety. And there are a variety of catalogs that I actually order from to stock my shelves. And the one that I order from most frequently is VGM Rips. So now what VGM Rips is, if you're not familiar with it, is a site that hosts... Like does like hundreds of VGM rips like a you know .vgm file which is a uh, format that has been like general I don't know quite the right word but it's mostly for FM music but it's being expanded into like NES Game Boy PC Engine Wonderswan Virtual Boy it just they just keep adding systems in there that it can support but a large amount of the VGMs on here on the site are from the Japanese PCs such as the NEC PC 8898 series um, the Sharp X 68000 as well as various arcade systems. And it's um, slowly starting to migrate a lot of the um, stuff from Project 2612, which was a site that hosted a lot of VGM rips of Sega Genesis music over to VGM rips, the website. So I don't know if uh, Project YM 2612 is um, like, it's just like uh, no longer being updated or anything. And somebody's just taking all the packs and updating the metadata, timing, emulation. So I, I don't know. So it's still, Still learning about it. I've only done one rip of my own, which was of the Kensaiden FM version. And so today I will be highlighting some of their latest additions um, from this last few months of this year. Starting off with this track that we opened up with, which was Comet Summoner from the game Comet Summoner, composed by Seichi Takamoto, Komo Eista, Higashi Totsuka, Einosuke Nagao, and Chaos. And the chip used for this was the YMF262, also known as the OPL3, which is 18 channels of 2 op FM. And this game was developed by Compile in 1998 for uh, Windows PC, IBM, PC, AT, like, you know, various other PC systems. And uh, there is a MIDI version of this soundtrack somewhere. And, um, you know, I imagine there was, like, a setting that you could set to have, like, you know, either the FM version or the MIDI version, depending on what sound card you had. Um, this particular version is labeled as being from the IBM PC, AT. And here's something I probably should have been doing while, um, you know, when I use tracks from VGM rips is actually telling you the uh, person that ripped the VGMs. And so the ripper of this is Dekio No. So now, what is Comet Summoner? It is a spin-off of the Puyo Puyo series, which is all itself a spin-off of the Del Monogatari series. So now, what kind of game is this? It's uh, best I could explain is like an action puzzler, uh, whereas you play as the character Witch, 
and you have to go through the stage. Um, it's just like a one-room stage, and you have to eliminate all the Poyos, like the little gel things that you see in Poyo Poyo that you have to pop and everything. But, um, so you basically destroy them either with, like, this little, um, moon shot that you have that takes several hits, or you collect stars through the stage called Comets, and you throw them at the Poyos, and it's just a one-hit kill thing. And then the cool thing is that if you throw the Comet as other Comets, it causes a chain explosion that could el basically eliminate all the Poyos at once, like, you know, in a row. So there, there's kind of like the puzzle act aspect there, I imagine. So now the song is a uh, Comet Summoner for Comet Summoner is uh, the title theme music, basically, and it's probably along the lines of something you'd hear on KVGM Radio, hosted with Hammock. Actually, this entire OST, I can totally see it being, you know, featured on KVGM at some point. I might have to send this Hammock's way. And so now as to the composers, um, the only information I could find were regarding Seiichi Takamoto and Ain Suke Nagao. Um, also known as Akiyoshi Nagao. So starting with them, uh, they got their start, you know, basically working for Compile, doing a uh, one song stage clear for Blazing Lasers, also known as Gunheld for the TurboGrafx-16 or PC Engine in Japan, and then did stage six music for Gunneck on the NES, and then would go on to do uh, Seiri Senshi Spriggan, Puyo Puyo for the Sega Mega Drive, Nazo Puyo for the Game Gear, Puyo Puyo for the Famicom, Nazo Puyo 2 for Game Gear, Super Puyo Puyo for the Super Famicom, Kirby's Avalanche on the SNES, uh, Super Puzzle Puyo, Lao no Lorux on the uh, Super Famicom, and then Mada, Madal Monogatori for the Super Famicom and Saturn, and then lastly this game, Comet Summoner, because after, um, after Madal Monogatari for the Saturn, there's nothing else. And so now this is the exact opposite for um, Seiichi Takamoto. He has no credits before 2002 that I can find, so the first credit being International Superstar Soccer 2, you know, ha 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 ha. Ronaldinho Soccer! Um, International Superstar Soccer Advance, International Superstar Soccer 3, Formation Final, Fairland Story, uh, Common Rider Dragon Knight, Godzilla, Project X Zone 2, and then Fairland Story again for, um, it's a remake of the PSP game in 2019. So now the question comes up is why aren't either of these guys credited for Comet Summoner at any point in their careers, like, you know, at uh, Ansuke's end or um, Shiichi's beginning? Who knows, maybe there's a few more PC titles in between that short span of uh, four years that just aren't listed, and that will may hopefully be showing up on VGM Rips soon. And then as far as Como Esta and Chaos, I couldn't find anything because, you know, the name, those names are just like, bring up either like, you know, Como Esta he brings up some, you know, Spanish stuff, or in Chaos brings up so many things related to Chaos, but not anything related to this. So they are probably just pseudonyms, and I don't know who they are. So, we're going to be moving on to our next fresh pack, and this is Front Mission, Wonder Swan version. And the song I'll be playing is called Elegy, and it was originally composed by Yoko Shimamura, and then arranged by Kazuhiko Sawaguchi and Tsuyoshi Sakito.
that was Elegy from Front Mission Wonderswan version, originally composed by Yoko Shimomura. And though they're not listed in the metadata, there's also Noriko Metsueda, and then arranged for the Wonderswan by Kazuhiko Sawaguchi and Tsuyoshi Sakito. And this pack was ripped by G the Guardian. So a little rundown on Front Mission. It was only released in Japan on the Super Famicom in 1995. Um, it is a ta turn-based tactical RPG, so think like Tactic Ogre, Tactics Ogre or Shining Force, but instead of being in a fantasy setting, this is futuristic and in mechs. And so what Front Mission Wonderswan is, is a enhanced port released uh, seven years later in 2002 on the Wonderswan, which was the last system created by Gunpei Yokoi a lot with the help of uh, Bandai before his uh, unfortunate passing. And to be more specific, this is released on the Wonderswan Color. And I do plan on doing a focus on this system in the future, much like I did with the Virtual Boy back in Episode 7. Um, and they're actually pretty similar as far as their sound hardware, except um, you know, whereas the Virtual Boy had five channels of Wavetable, um, Wonderswan has like, you know, four channels. But it's kind of like Wavetable. It's uh, like, I think it's like 4-bit PCM or something like that. The main difference being that the Wonderswan was a grayscale and not red. And then Wonderswan Color, of course, can display more colors than just red. So now I'm going to tell you about the composers, the uh, the original composers, starting with Yoko Shimomura. Um, and of course, you know, should know about her. She's like the queen of VGM. Um, you know, got started with Capcom and the big one being Street Fighter 2 and then went on to work with for uh, Squaresoft, composing for Live Alive or Live Alive, um, you know, which just recently just got, what from my understand, a spectacular remake, remaster, Super Mario RPG, of course, and then the big one being the Kingdom Hearts series. And then Noriko Matsueda, who uh, got started doing Front Mission alongside Yoko Shimomura, did one song in Chrono Trigger, did the whole uh, OST for Bahamut Lagoon, which is a really interesting game, Tobol Number 1 with a whole plethora of Squaresoft composers, uh, the entirety of Front Mission 2, Racing Lagoon, um, alongside Takahito Iguchi, as well as the Bouncer in Final Fantasy X2. But of the two, um, Elegy was definitely composed by Yoko Shimomura because of just some of the, um, well, best way I could put it is the Shimomura-isms in this track. And the arrangers did a pretty good job of keeping those in there. So starting with Kazuhiko Sawaguchi, he's largely taken on like more assisting roles in like the uh, comp compositions of music. So he was the sound programmer for Team Innocent, The Point of No Return in 1994, sound effect coordinators in Fatal Fury Special, did the sound effects for Super Bomberman 90, or 5, yeah, Super Bomberman 5. Uh, did music for Mario Party 2. Uh, sound effects for Elemental Gimmick Gear, if you remember that from the last FP SPO episode. I got that for uh, for Bedroth. Uh, did the opening music for um, Sonic Shuffle, which is a weird game. Uh, game Boy Wars 3 did the music. Um, and then the last pro um, one I could find is synth programming for Gravity Rush 2 in 2017. Now moving on to Tsuyoshi Sakito. Um, got started doing music comp composition for Motocross Maniacs, Space Manbo, SD Stature, Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the back from the sewers on the Game Boy. Um, and then moving up the way, we go to Chocobo's Dungeon 2, Freight Fencer Musashi, and then starting in the 2000s, did a lot of arrangements for uh, like a lot of game re-releases, so Final Fantasy 2, Front Mission, Final Fantasy Origins, Saga, uh, Romantic Saga, Final Fantasy 3, and then going up even further, he did uh, music for Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, uh, Kingdom Hearts, Birth by Sleep, The Third Birthday, um, Dissidia 012, Duodicum, Final Fantasy, uh, the uh, Theater Rhythm, Final Fantasy Music Data Support, uh, Bravely Default, did the backing guitar for the Four Heroes of Light, uh, Final Fantasy Explorers, uh, Kingdom Hearts, at Unchained X, and then his final credit being guitar in the... Uh, Pixel Perfect versions of Final Fantasies 1 through 6 that ju were just released within, like, you know, this past year. <sighs> Sorry for all the composer jibber-jabber, you know, I try to fit as much as I can. But, um, and also for this track, the song that's been playing underneath, uh, been a little, uh, on the low side. So, this next track is gonna get your blood pumping, and it's gonna have a less jabber from me because it's only one composer. So this is coming from the game Starship Rendezvous, and the song is called Exploding Bass, composed by Hitoshi Sakimoto.
That was Exploding Base from Starship Rendezvous on the NEC PC-8801, released in 1988, composed by Hitoshi Sakamoto using the YM-2608 sound chip. And this pack was also ripped by G the Guardian. So now Starship Rendezvous. This is an adult game with sexy bits. So, you know, you um, the gameplay is basically you walk around and from screen to screen shooting at enemies. You can shoot one bullet at a time, and you can't shoot again until the bullet leaves the screen. Um, and uh, you walk around, and you just do that until you get to a boss, which is a woman. And as you fight them, they get into various states of undress until finally you beat them, and then you get to have a uh, sexy screen of them. Like a full pixel, all the glorious pixel boobies and all that stuff. So, you know, great. But... What's uh, really stand out about this game is the soundtrack, which was collectively composed by Hitoshi Sakamoto and Masaharu Iwata. Though um, this track was solely composed by Hitoshi Sakamoto, and you can tell. This definitely wasn't his first rodeo. He already had a couple of, you know, soundtracks under his belt here, but this is like the first time that he really, like, you know, they really pushed what, what could be done with the hardware and really got, um, you know, recognition for their music musicality, especially Hitoshi. You know, you could hear all the like little tricks and patches and stuff you would hear him use in later projects on the Sharp X 68K, later NEC PC games, as well as the Mega Drive. For example, Midnight Resistance, Devilish, and Gauntlet 4. As well as little hints of what was to come with uh, Tactics Ogre and Final Fantasy Tactics. Now, just name off a few odd things that he's done. is uh, was the PC Engine arrangement of Shin Megami Tensei. Uh, would go on to do Eye of the Beholder, Tactics Ogre, um, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie as well as Dragon Warrior 3, and then Radiant Silver Gun, Armed Pelly's Bat Rider, uh, Tekken Advance, Legaya 2 Dual Saga, Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter, Gradius 5, Final Fantasy 12, Tekken 6, uh, Valkyrie Chronicles 2, um, Lord of Arcana, Learn with Pokemon Typing Adventure, he was music su supervisor on that, uh, Crimson Shroud, uh, Terra Battle, uh, Devil's Third, Odin Spear, Left. Oh, I didn't know about that one. Let's let us let us have to look into that one. And then uh, last credit I could find is 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. And there's so much more. This this band, the music that this guy makes, I love it so much. I like his music a lot. But now we got to move on to our next game, and this is Sadakichi 7, Hideyoshi no O again, released on the PC Engine. The track is called Tokyo, composed by Daisuke Inoue. That track with some little extra grated sleaze on top was Tokyo from the game Sadakichi 7 Hideyoshi no O again, released on the PC Engine in 1988, composed by Daisuke Inoue using the Hue C 
6280. And this pack was ripped by Music Fox. So Sadakichi 7 is a graphical point-and-click adventure game very much in the veins of Deja Vu and Shadowgate, developed by Hudson Soft, and it is very much a parody of the James Bond series. So a lot of the music will be like paying homage to like the music from homage, homage, homage to music from the James Bond movies uh, with some like you know kind of a Japanese flair to it. But getting back to the game, you take on the role of Sadakichi Seven, you know, 007, a uh, real name. Tomokazu Yasui, and he is commissioned by the Osaka Chamber of Commerce to stop the evil organization, Nato. So now getting back to the music, composed by Daisuke Inoue. He uh, is a professional musician, and um, with for about uh, 10 years, like you know, starting in 1986 all the way up to 1987, he was an in-house musician for Hudson Soft. Starting with the games Milan's Secret Castle and Adventures of Dino Ricky, and then going up we got Robo Warrior, uh, World Class Baseball, Power League on the uh, X68K, Power Golf on the TurboGrafx-16, uh, Turbo Trail, Bill Lem Lembier's Combat Basketball, Power Golf 2, the, the golfer on ROM 2, <laughs> uh, Pokonyan, Amazing Spider-Man Lethal Foes on the Super Famicom, Virtual Casino, uh, and finally, the last credit is Bomberman 64 as Sound Manipulate Chief. So now, as I mentioned earlier, he was he is a professional musician, so outside of Hudson Soft, he had been part of the band's um, quotations, as well as the young Ido in which he formed. And uh, But uh, I, I will tell you this, don't confuse him for the Daisuke Inoue, who was one credited for inventing the karaoke machine, as well as don't confuse him for the Daisuke Inoue, who uh, actually directed Strangers in Paradise Final Fantasy. So now coming up next, I got for you a Q soundtrack. Yep, that's from the CPS2 Capcom arcade boards. This game is Quiz Nanairo Dreams, Nijiro Cho no Kiseki. And the song is called Because of Your Utmost Effort, Kumiko's Theme. Composed by Isua Abe, Masato Koda, and Satsuo Yamamoto. That was because of your utmost effort, Kumiko's theme. From Quiz Nanairo Dreams, Nijiro Cho no Kiseki. Originally released on the CP System 2 by Capcom in 1996, and then later released on the PlayStation and Sega Saturn. Composed collectively by Isoa Abe, Masato Koda, and Setsuo Yamamoto. 
And now, you know, some weird things are released in the arcade, and this one is no different. This is a dating sim slash quiz game. So, from what I can tell, there are um, seven girls in this game that you can date. And uh, I think you work your way through them from the way it looks, or you choose, I don't, I don't, I don't know, but um, they give you quizzes. And if you answer correctly, it increases their love and confidence in you. And the ultimate end goal is to um, unlock these, uh, or restore these seven crystals assimilated into these seven girls to then seal away the devil. So, yeah, you know, just a wacky arcade fun time. So now here's some fun facts about this game. Um, all seven of the girls were named after different seven different candy companies that were actually sponsoring this game. Uh, but they, they were uh, renamed for the P PlayStation and Saturn releases. Fun fact number two is that uh, one of the girls, Saki Koneba, renamed Saki uh, Omakane for the ports. Um, the description here is a seemingly ordinary 16-year-old girl who is actually a member of an international Earth Defense Force makes a cameo appearance in Mar Marvel vs. Capcom as one of the assist characters. She's the girl with the uh, red suit and the giant machine gun, as well as being one of the playable characters in Tatsunoko vs. Capcom Ultimate All-Stars. Fun fact number three, three, three. In the October 15th, 1996 issue of Game Machines, this they listed this as the most successful arcade game of the month, outperforming games as such as Dancing Eyes and Street Fighter Zero 2 Alpha. Kinda says something, huh? But enough of these silly things. On to the composers. Starting with Isao Abe, also known as Oyaji or Oyaji Oyaji. Sure hope the Oyaji Hunter isn't after him. He's got to start doing sound design on Street Fighter 2. And then going up, went to Knights of the Round, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, The Punisher, Drag Dungeons and Dragons, The Tower of Doom, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, X-Men Children of the Atom, Super Puzzle Fighter 2, and then jumping ahead a little bit, Spawn in the Demon's Hand, Guitarist on Beautiful Joe 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix, I Wanna Be the Boshi, and then Devil May Cry 4 Refrain. Up next, we got Masato Koda, and he did guitars and piano on the Street Fighter Alpha Warrior's Dream, which was the PlayStation port, and then Cyberbots Full Metal Madness, Mega Man 2 The Power Fighters, Darkstalkers 3, Marvel vs. Capcom, uh, Magical Tetris Challenge, jumping ahead, um, Monster Hunter, Wild Arms 4, Escape, Ape Escape 3, Monster Hunter Freedom, uh, Super Smash Bros. Brawl did some arrangements on that, Dance Dance Revolution Wings Club, sound producer, uh, El Shaddai, uh, Ascension of the Metatron, lead composer on that, The Wonderful 101, Conception 2, Children of the Seven Stars, um, some more Smash Bros. arrangements, The Evil Within, uh, Fire Emblem, Birthright, and Conquest, Project X Zone 2, and then jumping all the way up ahead, he did uh, Ghost and Goblin's Resurrection as well as as a ranger for, again, the Final Fantasy Pixel Perfect remasters. If you're keeping tally of how many composers we have so far that worked on those Final Fantasy Pixel Perfect remasters, if we get a third one, you may get a prize. And then this brings us to Setsuo Yamamoto. And uh, they started doing Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition music design, uh, Mighty Final Fight, Mega Man X, uh, Disney's Aladdin, X-Men Mutant Apocalypse, Mega Man The Power Battle. Uh, Mega Man 2 The Power Fighters, Street Fighter Collection in 1997, Rival Schools, JoJo's Venture, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Strider 2, um, Glass Rose, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix, Dead Rising, Chop Till You Drop, uh, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, Resident Evil Revelations 2, uh, Monster Hunter Stories, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, Monster Hunter World, and then the Resident Evil 2 and 3 Remix, and then finally Resident Evil Village in 2021. Uh, so now before we move on, I forgot to mention who ripped this pack, and the name of the person that ripped this pack was Grin. So now the next pack I got coming up here is uh, something a little different. It's not a game, it's actually a uh, piece of software that was created to make Game Boy music. And no, it's not LSDJ, this is called uh, Carry On, yeah, Carry On Player V.0. V it was created by Alexi Ebon, and the song that I'm going to play for you, the demo, is called Old School.
that awesome Game Boy tune you just heard was Old School, composed by Alexei Ebon, a demo tune from Creon Player version 1.0, also created by Alexei Ebon. And this pack was created by Fusoside. And uh, this tune, as well as the other demo tunes part of this pack, um, really are up there, like, you know, rivaling Jay Kaufman and uh, Alberto H uh, Jose Gonzalez as far as, like, you know, Game Boy, Game Boy tunes go. So now a bit about Alexei here. Um, he has actually been a, a big player in the demo scene since the 1990s, in which he uh, would go under the alias Heat Beat. One group called uh, Kuriron, which then would merge with another group called Cyberiad, which would form CNCD. But before this, in his childhood, he actually uh, got involved um, with uh, programming BASIC on the VIC-20 and Commodore 64, which led up to his creating music on these things, and then him leading up to the demo scene. And then outside of the demo scene, he actually uh, composed music. I think the first game that he did was uh, Elf Mania for the Amiga. And then he uh, eventually got involved with um, making the music for Project S11 on the Game Boy Color, which was uh, very, you know, is very well regarded for its just like insanely technical music. And he did make it alongside a fellow demo scener, John Voltanen. But before doing Project S11, he was actually employed by Nokia to, uh, you know, work on ringtones and sound effects and whatnot. And then after Project S11, he alongside John were hired by Paragon 5 to work on more games, as well as, like, you know, to use their in-house um, Game Boy music software, which I imagine eventually led up to him creating the Creon Tracker. And then about the mid-2000s, he started, uh, went back to the C64 and started creating more, uh, like, a music software for that because all the other softwares he considered unintuitive, as well as PolyTracker, which is a mod, like a four-channel mod tracker for the Commodore 64, as well as a program um, called Sid Vicious, which is basically um, like a Sid emulator for the VIC-20 computer. And uh, he's still very much active up to, day, up to today, like, you know, between, you know, the mid-2000s all up to now, he's just, like, created non-stop music, like, all demo, demo scenes, released uh, compilations of all his modules, as well as um, non-chip tune music that he all has all on sound, or on Bandcamp, under his name, Alexei Eben. And I am definitely going to have to look more into this guy, because I'm, this is the first time I've heard of him, and, uh, you know, if this is any indication of what, you know, what his music stuff sounds like, I'm all in. I mean, just listen to the use of that wave channel. It's like he's getting like this high-pitched kind of squelchy synth sound, and then like the the samples are just like night like crunchy, but they're also oddly clean. I don't know. It's um, the software that he created is pretty impressive. And with that, we're coming up to our last pack, and it's called Kaonai Chasse, and the track is simply called BGM5, composed by Spunky Seta, Nobuhiro Makino, Shinchan, and Mito Unit.
BGM5 from Koonai Chasse, composed by Funky Seta, Nobuhiro Makino, Shinchan, and Mito Unit. Made for the Sharp X68K in 1992, and this pack was ripped by Marklin Cadet. So now what can I tell you about this game is, uh, it is an adventure game with sexy bits. Yeah, and um, and as far as I can tell, this may or may not be based off of a uh, hentai of the same name. Not gonna get any further than that. But what I can go further on about is this music, and um, the beginning kind of actually makes me think of a uh, music by Joe Hisashi, the man who has composed all the music for uh, Hayao Miyazaki's movies. But also has kind of like that jazzy, kind of loungy sound that you would expect from a you know a game of this sort. And again, this is uh, some good KVGM vibes. Uh, another one I'm gonna have to send Hammock's way. Now, of the four names that are involved with this music. Only one I could actually kind of tentatively say I found out maybe them's, and that is Nobuhiro Makino. So now, um, this game isn't listed in the credits that I found for them, they might have just left this off the resume, so, but the first one on here is from 1993, and that is Magic Coal, and followed by Jutai Senki, and then Android Assault, The Revenge of Barry Arm, Bashojo Senshi, Sailor Moon Collection in 1994, Hyper Irai, or Iri, yeah, Iria, and Mohojin Guru Guru 2 in 1996, and that's all I got on this guy. And as for Funky Seta, which is a really damn good name, Shinchan and Mito Unit, I couldn't track down who they were, I, you know, I looked for a bit, and yeah, just couldn't find anything confirmed, because like, you know, Shinchan, of course, would bring up Crayon Shinchan, Mito Unit brought up a bunch of things that involved like the name Mito, and then Funky Seta, I don't know, just brought up a bunch of random things. And this brings us to the end of this feature of the newest packs from BGM Rips. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, this is the place that I bring most of my music in from because, uh, yeah, I mean, there's just so much there and they're always like bringing in new stuff. They're like the, the one catalog that I order from that is constantly has new stuff coming up. So I would highly recommend you go uh, give yourself like a chance to just go explore this site because, yeah, there's just so much awesome music on there and there's much more than just the FM stuff from the Japanese computers. So now I will spiel at you about where you can find VG Emporium. And you can find it on uh, Twitter, as well as Instagram, and then uh, all your favorite podcatchers, Spotify, Apple and Google Musics, Audible, Amazon Music. And uh, just recently, I just got my Spotify wrapped, and apparently I've been listened to in 10 countries. I put up about uh, like 1.8 thousand minutes of audio up, which is crazy. And then I have, I think, what is it, 43 listeners? Hold on, let me look at that. Uh, ah, okay, so as of, you know, this wrapped, I have 43 episodes up, 97 listeners, and 35 followers. So, hey, you know, look at that, you know, just not bad for a uh, first year, huh? And I just want to thank all of you listening, and, you know, because of you, you know, some of those num big numbers are there. And I would imagine that collectively, you know, that those numbers might be even bigger because, uh, you know, who knows? Like, the way how I do this, I upload my stuff to archive.org, then link it to my WordPress, and then that goes to all the different podcatchers. So the only real way I have of knowing, like, you know, how many times they've been listened to is on archive.org when those links are accessed. Other than that, though, I don't have a centralized way of knowing how many, how many like, individual listeners, all that stuff. But, hey, it doesn't really bother me because, you know, hey, I'm just a guy that's just having fun getting all this VGM stuff out of my head. And whose heads is this? This is uh, your, your, the proprietor, your host, Rage Cage, and you can find me as also on Twitter and Instagram as well as on SoundCloud where I post a lot of my original and covers of chiptunes, or like my original chiptunes and covers of other musics done in chiptune. And then on those social medias I mentioned, you can find me just uh, making a fool of myself beatboxing occasionally. So now, um, see, by the time you're listening to this, it'll be the 1st of December, so in about 17 days, 16 days, I'm not sure, um, I, it's going to be my birthday on December 17th. I'm going to be turning 35, the big 3-5. Hey, hey, I'm, you know, some would say I'm an old man. Am I? I don't know. But um, I have a couple cool things planned out. Um, I'll be having an episode coming out on Thursday, so that would be the 15th. But I'll be having a birthday special coming out on the 17th. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to be doing it, but... But what I do know is that it's going to be episode number 50, which is kind of, you know, kind of cool. You know, my 50th episode on my birthday. Now, isn't that a great present? So now I will leave you with a big old thank you for coming into VG Emporium and listening to me uh, just talk about these new packs that I found and that I've really enjoyed. And hopefully you'll go and explore your, yourself. There's just so much good music there.